My name is Tzu Fung Kang from Johns Hopkins University. So today my topic is uh, how is portal being propped. So yeah, the uh, I'll be talking about the as uh, experimental aspects behind the large scale measurement of our work, and the work is targeting at the client side flood pollution vulnerabilities and its further consequences such as cross site scripting. So here is the roadmap. Here I will be. Uh, Introducing our work very quickly, then dive into the implementations, uh, evaluations, discussions, and then wrap up. So, uh, in the introduction part, uh, there are mainly two questions: so, uh, What are the con uh, product pollution and its consequences? Then, how do we detect them? And what is the system design? Yeah. So, what is product pollution? Uh, product pollution involves like uh, polluting a base object's property in the JavaScript, and then uh, such property will open up a uh, further backdoor for the adversaries to inject uh, malicious scripts and then uh, causing even further uh, severe uh, consequences. And private works also study about uh, product pollution. However, they have many two issues. First is like the consequences are not uh, are unclear and basically they do not study about them. And the second thing is like they target at the server side applications only, such as Node.js, but they do not study the uh, client side product pollution. And then the consequences are like, so yeah, as I talked before, the uh, further vulnerabilities or damages caused by the adversaries when she, uh, he or she uh, kind of uh, injects the malicious code. And uh, examples could be cross-site scripting, cookie manipulations, and the URL manipulations. Uh, then the, sorry, the intuitive idea of a design also our novelty is called the uh, joint taint flow analysis, where uh, uh, here we put the adversary control inputs as well as the vulnerable codes right there. So uh, yes, uh, I will go over it very quickly. So basically uh, in the first iteration, the statement O equals to O bracket P will be executed. This forms our first sync function for the production. Then in the second iteration, the uh, O bracket P equals to J will be executed. This form our uh, second sync function. And then comes the uh, cross-site scripting sync functions, which is called the uh, append function in this uh, vulnerable code snippet. Then uh, we talk about how the uh, adversary controlled inputs flow into those uh, three sync functions. So basically the first part is the underscore underscore portal underscore underscore following into the variable p in the uh, first sync function. After that, the uh, object o will have an uh, what we call the uh, object chain flow flowing into the variable o in the second sync function. And this o is uh, currently pointing to the object dot prototype, which is an uh, which is a uh, built-in like a base object in the JavaScript. The second data flow uh, contains the uh, uh, key called k flowing into the variable p in the second sync function. The last one is the malicious script part, which could cause the cross-site scripting uh, consequences, and it first flows into the variable j in the second sync function, then flowing into the cross-site scripting uh, sync function. And then we call the joint flow as the uh, joint of those three data flows, as well as the object data flow. And our analysis, uh, I mean, our system is built upon the joint tenant flow analysis. So uh, our system architecture is basically look like this. Uh, it has two main parts, joint tenant flow analysis, as well as the result validation. And the joint tenant flow analysis will generate the corresponding tenant flows, as well as the exploits for the result validation module to further validate it, and then we automatically generates the technical reports to the website owners to, uh, for uh, yeah for for their notice then in the uh, inside the first module the input exploit generator will be responsible to generate inputs for the dynamic tent engine to do some uh, tent tracking over there then the engine will provide sufficient information for the yeah uh, uh, input exploit generator to generate next step inputs or the final step uh, X voice and this procedure will repeat for several times. Then we further uh, validate the exploit generated both for the uh, product pollution and its further consequences such as cross site uh, We also analyze the uh, defenses that the real world website uh, has already deployed to actually defend against the product pollution vulnerabilities. 
and we will talk about how uh, how the defense analysis results uh, look like in the in the, the next few slides. So then we come to the implementation part. Basically, uh, what software uh, software tools do we use to implement Proto Proto, and what challenges have we met when deploying the uh, large scale measurement? Uh, so it's like uh, the implementation of Proto Proto aims at helping the system achieve better performance and reliable evaluation results. So basically, they are. Uh, the dynamic tent engine is built on the top of the uh, of the prior work, uh, which is the uh, Malaysia at all's work, and and their work is further uh, built upon the uh, Chromium source code and as well as this V8 engine. So that's why why the dynamic tent engine is built uh, on the top of C C plus plus the language like that, and for the exploit validation part, uh, we use JavaScript to actually validate that uh, exploits to kind of validate uh, uh, this, uh, uh, this vulnerability really exists and this is because it is uh, indeed a JavaScript vulnerability, right? So we just use JavaScript to validate it. As for the uh, input exploit generator and the defense analysis part, we use uh, both Python and the C, C, C++ languages to uh, actually implement them. Our experience with deploying is like, first we have to get the Chromium to run, but because the Chromium is like a some, somehow old version, we have some trouble when deploying it. Uh, first we get the source code from the... Uh, I'm sorry, can, can you switch to uh, like another view? It's like, uh, I think the text is kind of small for me. Thank you. <clears throat> yeah, so we got a Google link from Malaysia at all for their uh, Chromium-based system. Uh, they have already uh, open sourced their system. However, there are several problems when like setting up the environment because their uh, their system is built upon Ubuntu fourteen and it's kind of old. And then the dependencies should be. Uh, move to that old version to actually uh, fit that, that environmental settings. So actually we did have some problems when uh, deploying, deploying that. Then we kind of uh, send an email to Malaysia at all to ask for a, a VM to uh, uh, for their uh, Chromium-based system. Uh, then we do the modifications on the V8 engine. However, we are not that familiar at the beginning. So we kind of use GDB to debug V8 to find the corresponding lo code locations, such as the uh, V8 slash source slash object dot H or the runtime the runtime have an object dot CC something like that to actually uh, find uh, how we are gonna hook the uh, hook the V8 engine to actually do the dynamic taint analysis. <coughs> uh, after we finished the modifications, we Realize that the compilations are takes taking too long. So it's because uh, I'm I'm using a Ninja to actually build that uh, system. However, uh, I <laughs> I accidentally do some Ninja clean before I do the Ninja build. So that uh, each time I will build uh, the whole system for the Chromium, which is taking a very long time, about uh, yeah about five hours. So uh, yes, you, you can imagine that. After I do a simple modification, I, it will take me five hours to actually compile it and then see see how it works. So uh, that is actually not tolerable. Uh, so uh, after that, we figure out the problem is like I'm not using the incremental building of the Ninja. So basically just uh, not doing the Ninja clean at the beginning, just to do the uh, Ninja build and then it, it will be fine because uh, it will use some incremental building for the uh, for the code that you are not modifying, it will just uh, rely as the same. And if it has some dependencies with the modifications of your code, then the yeah, the ninja will solve it well. Uh, then we kind of start crawling the uh, real world websites for the measurement results. Yeah, we hope. Uh, yeah, we hope these discussions will have researchers better conduct large scale measurement studies. 
And for the color choice, uh, so there are many two, two choices for uh, for us to like uh, do the crawling. It's like do, using Python or uh, uh, Chrome extension. Uh, well, for for my previous uh, experiences, uh, Python are kind of more powerful when controlling and interacting with the web pages. However, there's the problem is like. Uh, it is an old version Chromium, so the uh, proper version of Chrome driver cannot be found. So I, after that, we'll have to write some JavaScript for the Chrome, uh, Chrome extension that we have uh, that we developed for our own, and then uh, do the crawling right there. So uh, how to control the browser with the uh, Chrome uh, extension? Besides uh, JavaScript, we also use the batch scripts to actually run the Chrome.exe and. Oh, actually, that that is not called Chrome Chrome dot exe because we are using on uh yeah we are running on Ubuntu and uh, it's basically just uh, executable. Then uh, talking about the color settings, uh, we also take some time to actually choose the parameters uh, to actually get a reliable uh, measurement results. So basically, there are several details regarding uh, regarding these lines. Basically, how many instances running in parallel. Twenty or thirty, or uh, it uh, could be based on the uh, memory cost and the uh, CPUs uh, of our server, and also the question regarding uh, running multiple windows or running multiple tabs in one window. It's basically uh, our one single tab will responsible for one single uh, website page, and then uh, so the choices could be uh, running multiple windows with uh, a single tab on, on a single window or it's like the multiple tabs in, uh, in just one window. So uh, eventually we choose to use multiple windows because uh, browser will generate different logs for different windows, but they, yeah, but if you put all of the tabs in one window, it will generate just a very long log file and then it will be hard for us to actually distinguish the uh, each of the seed websites from from that large log file then what is the timeout for each page and for each website so basically for each seed website we we are going to explore uh many of its sub pages the sub uh web web pages uh, according to the uh, clickable links on uh, that is that is displayed on the uh, yeah, that is displayed on that web page. And uh, finally, we set about uh, 100 or more uh, seconds timeouts for each page to actually, f uh, I mean, for each website to actually finish all of its sub pages uh, exploring. Uh, then we also uh, run into some random incidents when crawling. It's like uh, first the links that uh, that is downloading files. Yeah, it's like our core extensions. F first, will clean some some of the uh, links that could download files, and it will like uh, have a pop up window right there, and it will stop all of the instances of the of the Chromium to actually uh, go further. And the solution is like we uh, we eventually filter those links, and we also notice that there could be runtime incidents that stop our large scale calling. So uh, we should manually check the caller status after a period of time. Uh, it's kind of maybe after one day, we should uh, manually log into the server and then do some checking right there. And then we also set some checkpoints for the caller to continue. So basically after it crashes or like uh, after uh, all of the instances are stopped, we can actually, uh, we don't need to start from the very beginning of the large scale caller because we have one million to with my million websites to crawl. So uh, basically, if I'm rem remembering it correct, uh, every 100,000, yeah. So after we have crawled every 100,000 websites, we have to like uh, continue from the checkpoints because it have some runtime incidents that we did not expect from, from the very beginning. And also the, uh, I'm sorry, also the catch our memory could be full when, uh, yeah, it's like uh, during my uh, very uh, early stage of uh, early stage experience of crawling, the uh, the catch or memory could be full that co that causes the browser to crash. Then we, uh, I kind of add some codes to actually periodically clear the cache memory so that it, it won't crash. Then 
after that, I also uh, automatically remove some of the use useless config files of Chromium, so that like the the server will be uh, more fitable to to like run the large large scale calling. So that is how we implement our system and how we deploy that system on the yeah the one million uh, real world websites. After that, we talk about the evaluation. So basically, uh, we have uh, six aspects of our evaluation. I will go over each of them uh, in the following size. And basically, in each of the aspects of our evaluation, we will be talking about what are the ex experimental settings and evaluation results. Uh, I mean, it's like both the intermediate results and, and the final evaluation results that is, pre uh, that is uh, presented in our paper. And from that intermediate or what we call the uh, unsuccessful results, what did we do to help uh, to improve them to to improve to the final evaluation results that are uh, displayed in the uh, paper? So basically, there are six aspects. The first aspect is the measurement results for the uh, one million real web websites. <coughs> So here is the uh, measurement results. We target at top one million Tranquil websites. Is because uh, Tranquil is more open source than Alexa, and and yeah. So I we believe that uh, Tranquil list is kind of uh, yeah more uh, more easy to to get access to. And then uh, server details is that, that's large. Uh, get a, gigabytes uh, memory and then uh, the CPU settings are there. Uh, it's basically that uh, that is uh, set yeah that is purchased and set by my professor so I, I have not not enough control o over the CPU and memories. Then the time period is like for the final evaluation results that we present in our paper uh, we took uh, around uh, three to four weeks uh, in total uh, starting like the you can see that the dates uh, on the on the slides, but we also want to mention that before that we also have a lot of trails starting from uh, March 2021, and kind of like uh, the first yeah before the first the submission of our paper, uh, we also run the run, run some large scale measurement uh, uh, in. June or July, something like uh, some days like that, and then we also continue to run them in uh, September, October, or then and then uh, to, from November and December, we generate the final evaluation results that we consider that they are kind of uh, great for the for the final submission, or is uh, that date is like after our major, yeah, after our major revision decision has been made, and then. Uh, uh, our paper is accepted, so the timeline is basically along that. So uh, it it took us a very long period of time to actually do the measurement study and then do the improvements of our systems. Then the caller uh, caller parameters are like uh, twenty instances running in parallel and the uh, one hundred and the twenty second timeout for each website. So actually. We ad adjusted that parameters quite a lot to actually fit the the overall settings of our server, so that it won't c crash very frequently. And yes, the, the and so that the the uh, the measurement results are could be like uh, validate. And uh, yeah, we, we here the results are like the same for my. Uh, main NDSS presentation. So actually we have discovered near 3,000 zero day exploitable vulnerabilities. And uh, for now, 240 of them have been fixed. Then we break down the vulnerabilities by its consequences, namely the cross-site scripting, hooking manipulations, and the URL manipulations, with the URL manipulations being the most prominent one. Then we also uh, uh, provide some vulnerable domain examples, such as library.com, cnet.com and mckinsey.com. We also provide the rankings, status, and expert codes in the following tables. And uh, we also note that the cnet.com and mckinsey.com has already fixed their vulnerabilities after we responsibly disclosed the vulnerabilities to their website owners. Uh, we also break down by the sources and things. For the joint flow sources, there could be uh, multiple types, such as 
URL search URLs that coming from document.location.search. And we also noticed that the cookies and the messages could also be the sources. And actually, the cookies and the messages types are uh, are some uh, some results generate uh, that we infer from the intermediate results. So basically, uh, we consider the vulnerability to be like only coming from the URL based sources at the very beginning, but after the uh, some trials on the like on the large scale measurement and yeah, it's like a large scale crawling. And then we discover the cookies and the methods could also be the sources for the portal pushing, such as like the adversary can control the document.cookie. And then uh, it could also like use some post message. Yeah. Some, some function called the post messages, post message to post a message to the website to actually cause this vulnerability. Then we also break down the vulnerabilities by its uh, sync types. So basically for each of the uh, types of uh, consequences, there could be multiple sync types. For example, cross asserting has the inner HTML, append, eval, and set attribute uh, functions for the, uh, for its sync types. And to note that the set attribute type is also what we do not expect from the very beginning is like from the intermediate results that we have inferred, like <clears throat> it's like for the, for the intermediate results, we uh, noticed that there could pot potentially be more cross scripting uh, vulnerabilities than we have found in the intermediate in the intermediate results. Then we kind of um, improve our system to actually further support the async types of a set attribute, and that's why we have found uh, thirty one more vulnerabilities that is related to set attribute, uh, <coughs> set attribute sync types for the cross site stripping. And then uh, yeah, this is the final uh, results uh, for our measurement study. But before that, uh, I have mentioned that we have some intermediate results. It's like <coughs> for the breakdown of joint flow sources, we also have, uh, we, uh, we just have like uh, nearly 600 uh, vulnerabilities compared to the final, like near uh, 3,000 vulnerabilities discovered. And for the sync, uh, it's like for the consequences, uh, as I've mentioned before, we, uh, in the intermediate results, we do not consider the set attribute as a uh, sync type. That's why our cross site scripting has uh, only discovered three of the vulnerabilities at the very beginning. But after we improve the uh, system to actually further su support the set attribute, set attribute, it discovers like. 48 vulnerabilities of cross scripting, uh, and it, and the number also includes the three vulnerabilities that we have discovered in the intermediate results, and we have uh, noticed that they have not been fixed yet. So that that's why we also include them in the uh, final table uh, measurement results. So basically, we have found 40, 45 more uh, vulnerabilities during our. Uh, yeah, during our experience after the intermediate results and kind of after the uh, major revision or uh, yeah, and after our after our paper has already been uh, accepted and we have also found some of the vulnerabilities that we also uh, append to this final table. So the question here could be like, how did we improve the measurement results? Uh, so we consider that we should design the uh, result validation module because uh, in the intermediate results we have a lot of uh, false positives mainly come from coming from the uh, cookies and the messages so actually uh, the first time that we got uh, false positives we do not consider it a false positive we uh, kind of consider it as a real uh, portion vulnerabilities but uh, uh, after some inspections or after some case studies we kind of figure out that it is indeed some uh, false positives. So actually the result, result validation module involves the uh, validating both production one uh, exploits and the consequence exploits. We follow the standard validation steps for production in the, yeah, in the JavaScript because we use JavaScript to actually result, uh, I mean, <coughs> actually validate that exploits to, uh, to avoid any false positives. Uh, there could be, uh, there is also a, another aspect like involving the 
uncovering more vulnerabilities, improving the input X ray generators. So what we did is like we apply some various input formats, including the nested array lookup, such as K0 bracket K1 bracket K2 equals to V. Uh, actually, this part is specific to our uh, task on the product pollution vulnerabilities. I do not know how to generalize that uh, experience that we have learned from the our uh, yeah from our uh, measurement experience and. Uh, it's like uh, previously the the formats could be only the k0 bracket k1 equals to v without without the k2 part but we finally uh, noti noticed that uh, there could be a very nested array lookup listing over there and it could also be k0 bracket k1 bracket k2 bracket k3 something like that equals to v something like that and also with different uh, delimiters so uh, Beyond the uh, bracket delimiters, there could be the uh, end characters such as k0 equals to v0 and k1 equals to v1 and uh, k2 equals to v2. This could also lead to some prototype pollution vulnerabilities. And after we discover those one of, uh, vulnerabilities, another uh, very important part is like we should do the responsible disclosure to the corresponding website owners. We consider to do it in a very automatic way. Uh, it's like we, uh, so so the engine should be able to search for the email addresses to actually reach reach out to the uh, website owners. So we develop, developed an a, a information retrieval tool based on regular expressions to actually extract those email addresses for their uh, for their corresponding uh, websites. And we also search on who is uh, record to actually find the email addresses. Uh, however, the problem here is like half of the uh, <coughs> vulnerable websites are actually not found or emailed. The number could be nearly uh, 1,500 of the vulnerable, uh, I mean, of the, of the vulnerable websites that do not have uh, valid uh, email addresses. This also includes uh, the email addresses on the Huawei's record because I I believe the uh, the website owners do not want their uh, email addresses to uh, actually being disturbed by some spam spam spams or yeah some malicious uh, some malicious emails uh, that is okay thanks and that is uh, affected and uh, okay I think we should kind of uh, move faster and the solution could be like <coughs> we manually inspect our uh, 1000 websites to find out how to reach out to them and send the reports automatically uh, it's basically uh, yeah we are uh, and then we will also allow 45 days to as uh, the responsible disclosure window this is our experience with regarding the responsible uh, disclosure and uh, the second aspect is the comparison with prior works. So the problem is like because we are uh, we are the first uh, first time uh, the large scale measurement study of client side pollution. There is no prior works measuring that uh, that vulnerabilities and its consequences. And then the solution is like we modify a state of the art server side detection tool to actually uh, see the possibility that the server side part can be uh, whether or not the server side part can, can be like uh, uh, transferred to our client side part, and then we have some comparisons between the uh, that uh, that detection tool with uh, our system, and we modify that object lookup ANSYS like the detection tool name to support the client side, and then compare our system with it. We added some client side sources to it, such as location and doc document dot cookie to object lookup access. So basically, it's a do not uh, support those client side sources at the very beginning. And then we we add them, and then we change some uh, modeling of their uh, yeah of of their tools. So so basically, we we uh, borrow from their experimental artifacts, and the comparison results is uh, is kind of like this. So actually, uh, the results shows that the problem also significantly outperforms the look, uh, object lookup answers. Uh, the experimental settings are first the uh, top 30,000 websites, 
And secondly, the, all of the vulnerable websites found by our system, and we would like to see uh, how their uh, detection tool is working on those vulnerable websites that we have discovered. Then they only de de discover uh, four websites out of those near uh, 3,000. So. <clears throat> Uh, next part is the performance overhead improvements. So there's a uh, reasonable overhead right now. This uh, is around uh, 38.6 uh, percent. Uh, yeah, present compared with the legacy Chromium because our uh, system is built upon the uh, legacy Chromium. So the, <coughs> we provide a a, a figure uh, comparing the uh, performance overhead uh, CDF of uh, all of uh, of the problem proto and Malaysia et al. and also the Lexi Chromium. So we can see that the curve is kind of uh, near each other. However, the intermediate results shows that there could be over 200% overhead compared with Lexi Chromium. So from the figure shown there, the distance between the, uh, between the figures, I mean, between the curves could be uh, somehow larger. So how how did we prove that? <clears throat> so we consider that we can improve either our implementation of joint tent for analysis or the dynamic tent engine borrowed from the community. So first is like we should make sure our implementation is optimized. The <clears throat> I'm sorry, the object tent bit that we uh, developed for our own is a previously unused one. Then no additional memory is involved. And the code for the input X-ray generation is efficient. So actually, we make sure that all of those three aspects have already been achieved. Then we also remove the unnecessary functions in the militia at all tank tracking engine. So basically, we change the configurations to a lightweight version, such as we uh, set east, east debug uh, flag to false. And then we re release the memory for information that is important for their work, but not important for us. <coughs> Uh, next one is the false negative results. <laughs> the experiment settings is a manually annotated benchmark from a GitHub repository. So we choose that GitHub repo because it fits our task best. So uh, because our task is to detect the product pollution as well as its consequences, and it has or, uh, and it has both of those two parts: the scripts with the product pollution and the scripts that are that are vulnerable to cross-site scripting if a uh, product version is present. So, and then the results, the final results show that there could be relatively low false negative rates for product version and the uh, reasonable uh, <coughs> false negative rates for cause scripting consequences. Thank you. <coughs> and, uh, however, we uh, do have some intermediate results. It's like uh, we have an uh, 80% uh, false negatives for cause scripting detection at the very beginning. So how do we uh, improve them? We think from the exploit formats. The formats looks like underscore underscore port underscore underscore bracket k1 bracket k2 equals to some malicious script. So uh, because underscore underscore port underscore underscore part could not be improved is because it is necessary for to trigger the production. Uh, so we targeted the other two parts to uh, to find some uh, uh, to find if there could be some uh, improvements of the uh, formats. So the solution, uh, the first solution is like we provide a rich list of uh, possible cross site scripting exploits to the input exploit generator so that we can find more cross site scripting. The other one is like we should generate the uh, multiple parameters, and that's why our system has some multiple runs uh, in the. Uh, in the first module called the joint tent flow analysis, so that our, uh, so that in the uh, K1 K2 part in the exploit formats, we sh we can generate more parameters uh, for more uh, cross site scripting vulnerabilities. The next one is called 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 coverage results. Uh, our our tools is the uh, Chrome uh, Google Chrome's the development tools. The metrics is like the ratio between used and total bytes of the target vulnerable uh, JavaScripts. And our data set is first all of the uh, 43 uh, files with cross shifting consequences, and then uh, 50 random chosen uh, real-world websites that are vulnerable to polar evolution. 
So uh, we provide the CDF of code coverage right there. It's, uh, it's, there are many, basically two curves. First curve is the real world uh, website curve. Then the uh, GitHub uh, data set, uh, GitHub data set uh, curve. We also provide a CDF of code coverage increase for the input export generation. <laughs> so basically, we we would like to measure how our input export generation is working. So we provide, uh, uh, yeah. So we run our tool with, with and without the input export generation to get the code coverage increase of the uh, of the, of those two curves. And uh, finally, we we come to the defense analysis results. So here is our final uh, results of the uh, defense analysis. So basically, they are two main uh, categories called data flow and control flow uh, defenses. And the data flow defenses are most prevalent one. Uh, the high level idea of defense analysis is like, like uh, we have uh, control, control variable experiments of two runs. So one with the normal inputs and the other one with generated exploit inputs. So if we discover that uh, the data flow changes, so there could be a, a defense over there. And then we also discover two kinds of those uh, data flow changes. The first one is like the data flow and change, but data contents uh, differ, kind of get altered. So the contents are actually altered by a defense right there. And the category is like the data flow defense. Uh, note that we do not know the categories for the defenses, like uh, namely the data flow and control flow at the very beginning. Uh, so those defenses are actually inferred from the uh, from the case studies and also our intermediate results. And yeah, so the, uh, another uh, category is called the control flow defense, where the data flow indeed cha changed. So that's uh, the change flow disappeared uh, between the two runs. So uh, one important, yeah, thank you. And one important lesson is like, uh, we we can learn from the case studies to actually determine the uh, categories for the uh, defenses, namely the data flow defense and the uh, control flow defense right there. Yeah, and so our experience is like the case studies are really powerful uh, in terms of like, uh, sorry, in terms of like uh, different sources that trigger product pollution and the consequences uh, categories uh, collection and uh, as well as the defense analysis categories collection. So we come to the discussion, the discussion part. Let's, uh, first, I would like to answer some of the questions uh, provided by David. So first is like, uh, we indeed use some uh, experimental artifacts for, from the community, namely the uh, the dynamic tangent by Malaysia et al. and the prior were, uh, Detection tool by Song et al. and then Google Chrome uh, Dev Tools. Then the question is like, uh, we indeed uh, reproduce results of early re research as a part of our work, uh, including performance overhead by Malaysia et al. and then me uh, measurement results of of, of Song et al. And then what can be learned from our methodology is uh, basically uh, three main parts. Uh, yeah, it's, it's yeah listed on the on the on the slides, and then did did, did we reproduce uh, did we produce any uh, intermediate results? The answer is yes, including the uh, unreliable measurement results, uh, high overhead and high false uh, false negatives. And then the wrap up could be like the uh, from the portal is the first large scale measurement of client side production and we discovered like nearly uh, 3,000 zero-day exploit vulnerabilities and then we have also learned some lessons when we improve the intermediate results and yeah so uh, yeah thank you for listening. <laughs>